Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about some common mistakes I see in the deadlift, something I got on our last video, probably four or five people saying recently that their hips shoot up when they squat coming out of the hole, and we're going to fix that. Before we dive into that video, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, and I want to let you guys know, if you've been noticing me crushing some squats, I took almost two years off, uh, a year and some change off, totally squatting, uh, give my back a break, give my mental a break, and now I'm back hitting pretty much all-time PRs at a lower body weight. My best squat ever is 590, but I weighed about 225. I weigh about 205 right now. We just rushed 530, so we're going for PR after PR, roll the footage, and I want to share with you guys the pre-sale of the new Kaizen Squat Program. Uh, it's basically formed around programming style that I've been using lately. It's a higher frequency training with about three times a week, good amount of volume, some accessories. So if you want to check that out, it's on discount right now. Click the link in the bio, head to kaizentraining.com, pre-sale squat program, check it out. So when we're talking about your hips shooting out of the hole, it could be a couple of issues, kind of three come to mind. Um, I guess maybe even four. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of list them off and then we'll dig into what's going on. One, it could be quad strength. Two, it could be your pace. It could be how hard you're hitting the hole out of control, um, not controlling the bar on the way down. Uh, three, it could just be a motor pattern issue. You could just have kind of the wrong groove in general, um, similar to a basketball swing or a golf swing. You just ha kind of have some technique errors. Um, and the very last could be breathing, embracing, potentially using a belt. So we're gonna go one by one, kind of dig these through. Um, the first one I said quad strength. Pretty basic, but often when your quads are the limiting factor, um, you may tip over in the squat a little bit in your body, your mind, everything forces in on your low back and hamstrings to muscle that way up, which some people squat a lot of weight that way, but probably isn't the most efficient. Um, if you're squatting efficiently with good technique, good programming, good nutrition, good sleep, um, typically we work the muscles we want to work and there isn't um, a huge limiting factor in one muscle. You know, weak point training is a thing. There is room and time for accessories to build certain muscles um, to kind of rehab or prehab um, our movement patterns or muscular imbalances. But in particular, the quads should be used fine in the squat. Again, if they are extra weak, now it's time we add in some maybe lunges, Bulgarian split squats, the belt squat, if you're a low bar squatter, squatting a little bit high bar, or as we mentioned in the previous video, front squats to build up the quads a little bit more. And then over time, a couple training cycles, you know, four, eight, 16 weeks of really focusing in on the quads, you should straighten out that squat a little bit. Number two, something I talk about in the squat with majority of the athletes I work, at, uh, work with is pacing or tempo. I call it pace. Um, because the pace on your way down and the pace on the way up of the squat is so, so important. You want to find a rhythm. You want to find a vibe that you hit 135 with and 500, 600, 700 pounds with. They should look the exact same pace on the way up and way down. Obviously, on the way up, as the weights get heavier, it will be slightly slower. But the control and the pace on the way down should be the same. Um, if you bottom out and kind of lose control, some people drop so fast into the hole, losing momentum or trying to gain momentum, sorry, and losing tightness, you'll hit the hole and your hips will just shoot up out of pure, basically tendon rebound. And then all of a sudden you get the load under your back and you try to find tension. And that's when your hips raise up and you have to finish the weight with your hamstrings, low back, et cetera, et cetera, or just dump it in front of you. Um, so controlling the weight, being as fast as you can under control on the way down is what I recommend to people. Um, when you're a beginner squatter, a lot of people move very, very slow, but once you find a balance, find the bar path that works for you right over your midfoot, controlling yourself, you'll be able to be a little bit more explosive and still take advantage of a rebound out of the hole is a great idea, but you wanna control it enough that when you get out of the hole, you don't flop forward. Um, the other one is motor pattern. So some people just, you know, when you first begin a movement, first begin a technique, have the wrong motor pattern down, the wrong groove, the wrong motion. Um, you know, if I played basketball my whole life and each year you're slowly refining your jumper till, you know, uh, you hit 14, 15, 16, and you finally find a consistent uh, jumper and everything in your form is the same, every shot, everywhere on the floor from a layup, free throw, three point line, et cetera, et cetera. Same with golf, right? You've got to practice and at first you might kind of have a hitch or you might be able to not swing full weight because of mobility. But over practice and practice, you find that out. And same thing goes with the squat. You need to find that uh, certain amount of weights 
to cause stimulus, heavy enough weights and intensity to cause stimulus and growth, um, but still that you can control your form and get that groove down, especially as a beginner. Uh, so what I find in a lot of people is they're going too uh, heavy too often uh, as a beginner, and what begins to happen is you get bad habits. And if you're greasing the groove on a bad habit over and over and over, chances are you're gonna squat that way for the rest of your life. So taking some time to maybe do some tempo squats and make sure that your knees and hips break at the same time, making sure that you come out and lock your knees out and hips at the same time. Uh, a big cue with motor pattern stuff that I talk about and I tell myself in my head is I think about leading with my traps, right? That's kind of where the bar is placed anyways. And so if I lead with my traps and I kind of pick up, I'm not lifting my head and I'm not necessarily shifting backwards or lifting my rib cage, but I'm thinking about pushing is everything from here down is as tight as I can. I'm thinking about pushing and leading with my traps so that barbell leads the way, rather than some people have the cue of pushing their legs in which this happens where your hips are gonna shoot up first because you're not paying attention to your upper torso. Uh, it should be as rigid as you could, and so if you think about pushing that upper body and pushing your legs at the same time, hopefully we accomplish that correctly. Last but not least is obviously breathing and bracing. It's something that we have to practice year after year, time after time, rep after rep, getting a little bit tighter every single rep, every single session, you can find something to squeeze out, um, but taking a big breath into our belly button, our sides, our low back, flexing as hard as we can, almost pushing out into that belt in a 360 around our whole midsection, flexing our lats really hard, so squeezing those shoulders down, sometimes pulling the bar down helps a lot, squeezing your lats, which can help control your spine and keep your midline rigid as possible, um, because if you have a floppy mid midline, you're breathing improperly, not using a belt, not flexing your lats, not tight traps, um, and you wobble in your midline, another opportunity again for the hips to rise up. Uh, with my squat training right now, my groove feels really, really good. Uh, today you'll probably see some footage of me kind of showing a couple ways that the hips fly up incorrectly. Um, I hit some pause squats, um, something I've been doing once a week, kind of beltless, sometimes uh, sleeveless, or I've been using ace bandages. We're getting an insane amount of questions about that. They're basically just ace bandages. They're weightlifting bandages or, or wraps. They, they give a little bit of compression, but not a ton of support or rebound. Um, just because of the frequency I'm having, my knees just feel a little achy, and rubbing those things on feels really, really good. So uh, hit some squats, then cleans as normal. Squatting again, two front squats a day right now. After my first buildup of squats, where I was just squatting three days a week, a little bit higher volume, now I broke it down. I'm doing five days a week, uh, a little bit lesser volume, two front squats and three back squats. One's kind of a, a more rep day, uh, beltless, uh, sleeveless. The other one can be sometimes with a belt and then a heavier day with a belt on Saturday. So I'm going for another PR this weekend. Stay tuned. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Check out kaizentraining.com. Get your squat up, Fram. Leave your questions below, let me know, and we'll cover it in the next video. I appreciate you. Sound like I'm out.